Hey, BookTube Sean here. And today I have a big old book haul for you. So uh, buckle in. We got a lot of books to get through. Um, I'll try to keep things short, but I'm going to read descriptions where I feel I need to. But I went to two library book sales. I went to one um, the day before my birthday. Um, I've been running. Oh God, I, I, like I took a four-day weekend for my birthday, right? And uh, the, fir the, the first day, uh, the, the Friday before my birthday, I, uh, I was running around all over the place. Uh, I, I, my wife needed an oil change. She worked from home that day, so she, excuse me, she made an appointment to go get an oil change. And uh, so I, I followed her up there, and so she could take my car and go back home, and I could wait for her car to get the oil change. Because uh, we got it done at the dealership because she got, she had a free one. Um, so she took my car back home and I was waited for her car at the at the oil at the oil change. So that's how my the, the day started. I had to also go to the Secretary of State's office to renew both license plates uh, on both of our the license plates on both of our cars. They were making me get a new one because mine was really because mine was over 10 years old. So they made me get a new a new license plate, and I had to renew my driver's license. And I had to do it that day because the next day was my birthday, and all that shit was expiring the next day. So I had to I had to do that. And then I knew I wasn't going to be able to get over to see my parents on my birthday because we had we had plans uh, to to go to the Detroit Institute of Arts and then hang out with a, fr a friend of mine afterwards. Um, so I knew I wasn't going to make it over to see my parents on my birthday, so I needed to get over there and see them. So I'm driving all this, and then I went to one one uh, office of the Secretary of State in the in the town that the dealership was in, and Michigan Secretary of State will allow you at some offices to check in ahead of time, like you can log in to the website and, and check in at that location. And then they'll send you text updates when you're getting close to your time. So I get to this particular branch, and the, also the way they do it, they used to have this express line. Sorry, I, I'm going off on a rant here before this book haul. I apologize. But so they go, you go in, and they used to have an express line for driver's license renewal and plate renewal. Um, they, they, they do have machine kiosks where you can renew your license tabs at, which I did that for my wife's plate because uh, I could. But with my plate, they were making me get a new license plate, so I had to do that one at the desk. So they used to have this express line. Now, and, or otherwise, you walked in and you took a number. Real simple, right? Walk in, take a number, and then sit down and wait for your number to be called. Now, you have to wait in line to get a number. You have to wait in this line to get up to the desk so that the person can see what you're there for and then they give you a number and then they also write down your name because if it's something simple if it's something simple and there's nobody behind you they'll just take care of it right then um or if it's something simple when they don't have a line which they hardly ever do not have a line they'll call you up by name and take care and take care of you if it's something simple but you have to stand in this line to even get your number. And so I walked in. I, I took care of my wife's at the, at the kiosk. And then I walked in to the place. And the line to get a number was almost out the door. The lobby was full. Almost no seats available. And it's one that allows you to check in and leave. And they'll text you. So you have really no grasp over how many people are ahead of you. So I ended up leaving there and going cross town to to the one that's actually on my way home from work um, where I know that they don't allow, allow the online check-in because I had checked the day prior to see if they did and they didn't. Um, so at least there, whoever I see in the, in the building is who I have in front of me. So... You had to go to two different Secretary of State's office, 20 minutes apart from each other. Um, but on my way from the dealership, the point of this was on my way from the dealership 
to the other Secretary of State's, I saw that that town's library was having a book sale, which I forgot. I used to live in that town. They always have a book sale around my birthday. And then this past weekend, uh, my library was having a book sale. So uh, enough on that rant. Five minutes in, let's finally get to the book haul. Uh, let me just grab a sip of water here. Okay, this is top one. It's probably the one I'm most excited about. I usually save the one I'm most excited about for last, but it's a big pile and it's a small book. So it, it, it would have toppled the pile if I put it on the bottom. So I am so excited to find this, guys. You have no idea. I've mentioned before that I'm a Monty Python fan. Um, which Monty Python's Flying Circus and Life of Brian and Meaning of Live, uh, not Meaning of Life, Meaning of Live, uh, a documentary about their live show, um, and, and Live at the Hollywood, and a ton of Monty Python stuff. Everything basically except Holy Grail and the Meaning of Life hit Netflix uh, this past week. So I've been super excited. I mean, Monty Python, I like, like, Fanatic is an understatement for me and Monty Python. So the first thing, I, I can't believe I found this. It is Monty Python's Life of Brian, the script to the movie. I am so excited. <laughs> anyway, um, I also got a, uh, a copy of The Picture of Dorian Gray. I've been hearing a lot about this book lately by Oscar Wilde. Um, and I've been curious and I was able to get a copy for like 50 cents. So, um, I picked that up. I got another copy of Scott Smith's The Ruins. I have a copy of Scott Smith's The Ruins. And I also have it on my Kindle. But I had the copy I had was the movie tie-in edition cover. And I wanted the original cover. So, they had the original cover. So, I got that. And I will probably take this uh, back to a used bookstore. Um, because this is the cover I wanted. I didn't want the movie tie-in cover. I wanted the original. Oh, man. I'm going to just pile up here and shit's going to topple. Um, I got a copy of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. Um, this is a modern classic uh, novel um, I've heard some good things about. I wanted to grab that and... Um, yeah, whatever. Um, I got a um, Allison Weir's biography of Eleanor of Aquitaine. Uh, I've been really... Uh, I've, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, but I, I did a play uh, several years ago. Probably like 10 years ago. Um, called a Lion, a Lion in Winter. Which is about uh, King is it Henry, yeah Henry, Henry and uh, and and Eleanor, um, Peter O'Toole and Catherine Hepburn were in the movie, um, and I played uh, I forget which print I, I forget my character's name but it was one of the princes, uh, the this one of the it was a very deceitful one uh, I kind of got to play a bad guy it was cool but ever since then I've I've really been interested in uh, Plantagenet history and uh, really uh, especially Eleanor of Aquitaine and I've wanted to read more about her and I and I never really have so I thought I saw Alison Weir's biography there so I uh, grabbed it um I am always on the lookout for uh, Ally Smith books. Oh, there's a little bookmark in there. Hmm. Um, but I'm always on the... Ally Smith is one of the authors I'm always on the lookout for with library book sales because she doesn't pop up very often. Um, but when she does, I, I grab her. So I got The Accidental by Ally Smith. Um, I'll, I'll read the description of this one. I'm at, I'm at nine minutes. I'm flying. I'm going through pretty quick. Uh, the Accidental is a dizzyingly, enter, dizzying, dizzyingly entertaining, if I can read, wickedly humorous story of a mysterious stranger whose sudden appearance during a family summer holiday transforms four variously unhappy people, each of the smarts, parents, parents even Michael, son Magnus, and the youngest daughter Astrid encounter Amber in his or her own solipsistic way. But somehow her presence allows them to see their lives and their life together in a new light. Smith's exhilarating facility with language, her narrative freedom, her chromatic wordplay propel the novel to its starting, starting, startling, wonderfully enigmatic conclusion. Actually, the first time I've read even the back of this, I just saw an Ellie Smith book and I grabbed it. So uh, that sounds cool. Um, 
I've mentioned before that I kind of try to keep a lookout for something I haven't heard of before when I go to a library sale uh, that just sounds interesting and, and catches my eye and then sounds interesting. And this is that book in this haul. City of Ash by Megan Chance. Uh, when the great Seattle fire of 1889 leaves them with nothing to lose, two very different women discover a mutual passion for revenge. Chicago, Chicago socialite and art patron Geneva Langley has brought scandal to her family for the last time. Her latest and boldest act of immodesty is too much for her father to bear, and he banishes her to Seattle, along with her scheming, ambitious husband, Nathan. Seattle is a far cry from Chicago. The streets are muddy, the society backward, and Ginny feels stifled and alone. Despite her considerable talent, Beatrice Wilkes is an actress whose dream of being a leading lady is fading rapidly. She can't believe her luck when a new production gives her a chance at stardom, but Geneva Langley seizes the opportunity for her own and unwittingly, and unwittingly crushes Bee's last dream. The two women engage in a fierce battle for center stage, but the Great Seattle Fire, which ravages the city, changes their fates and plans. In its aftermath, Ginny and B see an opportunity to change their lives, but it would mean banding together to enact a truly wicked plan. Their dark and perilous alliance will set them on the path to either redemption or damnation. That just sounded really interesting. And there's a theater angle to it, so it just, uh, it just, uh, it just spoke to me. So, uh... Hopefully, I hopefully I'll get to that sometime soon, because uh, that sounded really interesting, and uh, I was happy to come across it. Um, next, I got there's a little story behind this one. Um, Anthony Kiedis scar tissue, and there's actually a bookmark in it, and it looks like that I have read a lot of it since since I picked it up. I borrowed this book. Uh, if you don't know, Anthony Kiedis is the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, I borrowed this book seven, eight years ago, uh, from my best friend and I've had her copy of it ever since. Um, and, uh, it's still, I still had, this is where I was at in her copy. Um, and she's who I was hanging out with on my, uh, the night of my birthday. So I, when I saw this there i haven't i've been to a lot of library sales and used book i have not come across this or else i would have bought it before then but for a buck i got my own damn copy of it i finally gave her hers back i i tell you this is a great rock star biography guys if you haven't checked this out i highly recommend i'm not even finished with it and i highly recommend checking this out it is amazing this man is still alive um just just really great rock, rock star biography. Um, that scar tissue, Anthony Kiedis. Um, I got a, found a copy of uh, Beloved by Toni Morrison. This is one I've been wanting to check out for a while. Uh, this is in the horror community. This is largely regarded at, as a horror novel. Like we, the horror community claims this novel has a horror novel. Um, and. Uh, because it, it really it, it, it is it's it, it's it's a ghost story, um, and you wouldn't expect that it being a Toni Morrison novel that it that it that it would uh, that it would have this um, horror tie in. But it I've been wanting to read it for a while because of that, and uh, I finally got my hands on a copy of it, uh, and uh, hopefully I can get to it soon because I've been I've been interested to read it ever since I found out that that it really was a horror novel. Um, I got a copy of Joyce Carol Oates' We Were the Mulvaney's. Um, I've been slowly collecting, I mentioned this in my uh, Books in the Books in the Books in the Freezer Readathon vlog that I've been slowly collecting uh, Joyce Carol Oates' books over the past, over the time, and uh, the she hardly ever pops up at library at the library book sales are on me. So I was happy to, to, to see, cause all my others of her are on Kindle. Um, I get them for cheap on Kindle. Um, this book, you guys saw me. I'm sorry. I'm taking a sticker off Costco buyers pick Costco wholesale. Um, you guys saw me haul this one in a library hall once. Um, and it's sweet friends, sweet Francais, uh, by Irene Nemirovsky. And um, this is a book 
that was discovered uh, 64 years after she died in Auschwitz. So uh, I'm really interested to read. I, I didn't get to it when I had it out from the library, but I came across it at the book sale. Okay, so that's all from the library sale uh, the day before my birthday. Um, now the rest are... And I have some DVDs to show for this one too. Um... The rest are from the library sale I just went to on Saturday. So I was a little disappointed in the one on Saturday at my, at my library. But then again, they also had a bag sale, uh, which I have a haul from, uh, like a month ago. So they, they didn't have, they weren't really restocked well enough to have this sale. So um, I did get uh, a book I've been looking at for a while, a couple years uh, it's called City on Fire by Garth Risk Hallberg. And I'll just read it real quick. Uh, New York City, 1976. Meet Regan and William Hamilton Sweeney. Estranged heirs to one of the city's great fortunes. Keith and Mercer, the men who, for better or worse, love them. Charlie and Samantha, two suburban teenagers seduced by downtown's punk scene. An obsessive magazine reporter and his idealistic neighbor and the detective trying to figure out what any of them has to do with a shooting in Central Park on New Year's Eve. The mystery as it reverberates through families, friendships and corridors of power will open up even the long, loneliest seeming corners of the crowded city. And when the blackout of June, July 13, 1977 plunges this world into darkness, each of these lives will be changed forever. City on Fire is an unforgettable novel about love and betrayal and forgiveness, about art and truth and rock and roll, about what people need from each other in order to live, and what makes the living worth doing in the first place. I think I heard about this book on somebody's booktube channel. For the life of me, I cannot remember whose. Um, it was before, it was when I was just discovering BookTube. Um, so, and I want to say that this went on my Amazon wish list from hearing it about it on BookTube. It was either BookTube or NPR, but I'm pretty sure it was BookTube. Um, so I was ecstatic to find, because I haven't, the price on it hasn't come down. I was, to, to find it for a buck at the library was uh was great i was really surprised to see that um i got i thought this was a good find um the thomas tryon is a uh is a early horror horror author i think 70s and i got his uh the knight of the moon bow uh i have a couple of his on uh, on kindle to um, Harvest Home, and I think I have the others on, on Kindle. I'm not positive on that one. I know I checked it out digitally once, but I don't know if I ever got my own copy. But um, this this will be a horror novel. Um, I got um, Keith Richards' biography called Life. Um, so I'm interested to read uh, what keeps this man alive. Um, and I also got, and I've read this book, um, but I finally got my own copy of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery with the original cover that I, that this is the cover I wanted. This is what I've been on the lookout for, and I finally found it at uh, a, a library sale. Um, I've seen it at used bookstores before, but the, the, like this is a little ripped up here, but I, play, the times I found it, it's been in worse shape. And I didn't want to spend the money. I didn't, like, the stores were asking six, seven bucks for it still in hardcover. And I didn't want to spend that much for a more tattered cover than this. And I got this for a buck. So, so that's the books that I got. Now, I also picked up some DVDs at this week's uh, sale. Um, now, this, the first one I'm going to show you is... I've owned for years. This this is this is mine. I got it the I think the day it came out. Um several years ago, um Universal released a legacy collection of their Universal uh Universal Monsters. Um so I bought the Dracula 
Legacy Collection DVD. I think, like I said, I think the weekend it came out, I bought the Dracula one, and I always intended to get the rest. Um, and 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 they're great. They have documentaries about about uh, the Universal monsters, and they include other movies. Like this one includes. Uh, Dra it has Dracula, Dracula's Daughter, Son of Dracula, and House of Dracula. So you get four movies, even. So, and this was the only one I ever ended up with. And now at the library sale, I found the rest. So I now have the entire Universal Monsters Legacy Collection. Um, so they had the Dracula one, like the entire collection was there, but I already owned Dracula, so there was no reason to, to buy that one. But we got Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, and this also includes Revenge of the Creature, The Creature, and The Creature Walks Among Us. Um, we got Boris Karloff in The Mummy, which also includes The Mummy's Hand, The Mummy's Tomb, The Mummy's Ghost, and The Mummy's Curse. We've got Lon Chaney Jr. in The Wolfman which also includes Werewolf of London, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, which is one I wanted to see for a while, and She-Wolf of London. We've got uh, Claude Rains in The Invisible Man. We actually just watched this uh, a few weeks ago. My my wife, and I mentioned, I think I mentioned this in the vlog, my wife is in a production of Rocky Horror Show, and the last time she did Rocky Horror Show, she got to sing... She's playing Janet this time, but the last time she played Columbia and she also did the Usherette at the beginning who sings the, if you know the Rocky Horror Picture Show, it's the song that the lips are singing in the beginning of the movie. Uh, science, it's called Science Fiction Double Feature. And in that song, 11 classic sci-fi and horror movies are referenced. So my wife, when she, got, when she sang the song, she wanted to watch all the movies that are referenced in that. And... Now, uh, my best friend is playing that is she's not playing Columbia, but she, but she's singing that song in this production of it. She's playing the Usherette. And she also wants to watch all the movies that are referenced. And my wife wanted to rewatch them. So the three of us have been watching through all those movies again. And the first one is no, no, the first one's the day the earth stood still. But the second one is no, wait, third one, third one. So. Michael Rainey was ill the day of the earth, so still he told us where to stand. Flash Gordon was there with silver underwear, and Claude Rains was the invisible man. Um, so this was the third one. And uh, so we so we just watched this like uh, like a month ago, but I was able to get, there's a legacy collection, and it also includes The Invisible Man Returns, The Invisible Woman, Invisible Agent, and The Invisible Man's Revenge. And... Uh, Boris Karloff's Frankenstein, which also includes Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, Ghost of Frankenstein, and House of Frankenstein. I can't even, I can't even tell you how excited I am to, to finally have all of these. And uh, we've got definitely some movie nights, some more movie nights with the three of us, because uh, we all want to watch them. So I'm excited for that. Um, and the other DVD I picked up is... Um, I've talked about how I'm a big British comedy fan. Um, I love the I love the series Mr. Bean, and Rowan Atkinson, who plays that, is just is just awesome. And I've had I had this on VHS when I was in my late teens, early twenties. But it's Rowan Atkinson live. Um, so it's just a bunch, mostly him, and uh, occasionally joined on stage by Angus Deaton, um, just skits. Uh, that, that he does live and this includes three that were not on my VHS so I'm excited to to see this again um, and that's it that is my double library sale book haul um, hope you uh, liked it if you have read any of these please let me know in the comments uh, what you thought of them maybe I will uh, prioritize some based on what uh people have have to say about them and uh that is it uh thank you to all my subscribers i appreciate every single one of you um if this is your first time here welcome i'm happy to have you i hope you stick around if you want to hit the subscribe button that way you'll be sure to know when i post new videos and i will see you all in the next one